Good afternoon, everyone. This is TransConnect. I'm Dr. Mohit Chaudhary, and today we'll be taking a very interesting topic that is all about radio frequency identification and blood banking, vein to vein traceability, right from the donor to the patient wave, and some experience on how we can implement it. So, what is RFID? RFID or radio frequency identification is a method of uniquely identifying items that use electromagnetic radio waves. That is the wireless air interface to interact and exchange data between tags and readers. So basically you have an electromagnetic air interface. It is wireless and you are interacting between the tag that is placed on the back and an antenna and a reader which is going to access the information from it. So what are these transponder tags? These tags consist of a chip or a small circuit board coupled to an antenna. So they all have a unique tag identification number or the UID and these are various types of tags. That is the paper tag, you can have an EPC tag, glue tag, metal tag, etc. So these transponder tags are of three types. That is passive, semi-passive or active. So what does that mean? Passive is mostly widely used in the blood bags that store the information. You can have a semi-passive or a semi-active which can analyze, measure and store. And then there's an active available all as well, which you can measure, analyze, store, send information, take back information, etc. Similarly, what are these readers? These readers are the ones that are going to read the information that is present on the tag and they have an antenna that sends and receives electromagnetic waves to exchange the data between the tag. So they have the power, uh, they can read and show the tag information only and includes a processor to run the software. They are fixed reader, they are handheld reader or mobile reader depending upon what you have. And uh, so basically these readers also have an antenna which is going to fetch the information from the data that is present in the tags. So the which frequency does it work on? There are three frequencies that is low, high and ultra high. So high frequency is what is recommended for blood products and it is around 13.56 megahertz. So coming to RFID we have seen in various areas. Now what does RFID solution mean in transient medicine? Basically it is implementation of RFID in healthcare. To, and there is a desire to improve the patient safety and enhance the efficiency of the supply chain. In transfusion medicine, it has a potential to support quick and easy access to processed data, including collection, manufacturing, testing, release labeling, inventory, and distribution. So this is RFID system. If you see how in this is the hospital, suppose this is a hospital and this is a pictorial representation of the same. Once you encode the same, then it can encode and give information right from encoding to the transport to processing of the blood bag then your inventory management can be taken care of it and all the way to the patient safety you can have a vein to vein link also the data that is transported or transferred can be used for analysis you can see where it is being transfused the blood is where when was it issued what time it took to you uh, for the whole transfusion to take place. So all of the data can be, you know, taken after a month or say after a week and you can analyze it, present it and use it for your own say. So this is a very handy system and this has an end-to-end -end tracking solution. So coming to various aspects of where it is useful, you can have donor identifying identification cards which can itself carry the barcodes and you can have an integrated RFID chips into such cards which so there can be data storage and replacement of photograph history address everything can be replaced with just an RFID chip there can be a processed monitoring that is there can be an RFID reader in donor management system and collection devices like mixing scale appearances device etc a blood product management, if you see, you can have this area offering a great possibility for process improvement. If the tag is applied to the blood bag, there is a potential to facilitate the product identification during collection and throughout the life cycle of the blood bag, right from collection, processing, distribution to monitoring, storage and distribution to the patient. If you see the donation process itself, the blood bag system with integrated RFID labels are not available. Tags could be added at the collection side. 
So during the donation process, you can monitor the same, the user, the time and the date, the collection period, all of that can be in that RFID chip. In the processing, if you see, it allows automatic identification of the bags with the read range. You can perform concurrent manual activities and there can be an automatic detection of units that can improve the efficiency and documentation of manufacturing stages. During the storage, if you see, it can have a quality or security check. We can have monitoring that is more easy. Product turnover can be made easily managed. There is receipt of bulk delivery. Suppose you are receiving some bulk deliveries from other hospitals or other institution that can be all generated to a RFID chip and all of that can come to your computer with just a click away. The use of semi-active labels with temperature monitoring allows product to be monitored during the transportation as well. Transfusion management if you, itself, if you see for the collection of pre-transfusion blood sample and transfusion of blood at the bedside, the RFID are very handy. So you can see that all this is interlinked and end-to-end -end solution in which the user gets a real-time access to the product characteristics and data from time to time from when it is collected and prepared to the time it is administered to the patient. So once you tag these bags with RFID, there is a linking of these equipment and software and all the way to the patient bedside, you can have a vein to vein system. So how to start whenever you are trying to implement an RFID, it involves a few stages and if you, you can follow your own process, but this is a, a, a ready reckoner for you. So basically you can do an initial brainstorming, all of your multidisciplinary team have to come together, which involves transfusion medicine experts, nursing, marketing, quality, medicine, medical, doctors, all of them can come together to discuss the feasibility if it is even feasible at your center or not. You can associate with the company that is Biolog ID, which is providing the RFID enabled tax presently, and then you can begin the deployment in phases. So that is what we recommend. So once you deploy in one phase, suppose you implement in one ward or one unit, which is a high throughput ward, you can gradually move upscale and you can implement it in other areas. So implementation method methodology, if you see, we have the phase one, which you assess, phase two is prototype, phase three, if you run a pilot, and phase four is when you deploy the same. So this is what happens when you start with the process. This is how we did it. So any blood center, if you see the whole blood is obtained from the donor and the components are prepared, and that is where we get the RFID tag, which is on the blood bag. So this is the RFID tag that is stuck on the product. This is with nail details and is added to the bag at the center. Once you do that, the RFID reader reads the tag and is ready to receive the information that is fed. So basically you can write the product code, the blood group, the expiry date. So the bag with the tag stuck on it is placed on the reader tray and details such as component type, unit number, blood group, expiry date are provided. And once it is treated, that becomes the identity or unique identification of the blood bag. Now, once that is kept, the blood bags are stored in the refrigerator with labeled location. Now, uh, you will notice this blood, blood refrigerator is a little different because the, health, the trays have been dis, you know, replaced with these different trays which can read the blood bags. So, each position can be read. The cabinet and the rack and the tray at which the specific component is present is instantly available on display and it is read by the antenna or the reader that is present below it. So cold chain strict policy, the fridge automatically senses that a component once played and taken for, for cross match. It indicates the time if the component is not in the designated site also. So if your, if your tech has removed the blood bag for, let's say for cross matching or for any other purpose, then it has been uh, lying outside. You can actually note down at what time it was taken out and for how long the blood has been outside also. So that is a very handy procedure, uh, handy and handy process. And this can actually tell you the quality of the blood product. Cross match data, the hospital interface system. Once you link it with the hospital information system, the labeled unit cross match can, can have the whole information of the patient and the donor, and you can actually have a win uh, to win um, methodology in this case. So you will have a unit number, you will have for which patient that unit is cross match, when was it cross match, whether it's compatible, incompatible, all of that information is there in your system. Net. And once the cross match units are uh, there, it can be located, identified, and issued to the patient swiftly. So the donor, uh, so the patient, the, whenever the tech wants to take the unit for a cross match, or suppose he has to run some tests, he just has to look at a screen and see where the 
unit is lying, suppose it is at position, uh, so suppose your fridge number is 14 at the second rack at the third position, it just has to go to this SSTR refrigerator, which is a unique refrigerator arbitrary uh, value that has been given. So once you go there, you go to this 14 position, take out the blood and that's it. So you can also see these green and the yellow uh, things, which are basically the status with the time. So basically this unit, which was O group, was taken out for a while and that's why the color has changed. This is, however, been inside the refrigerator and that's why it is still green and good to go. So depending upon for how long you want to uh, keep this alarm based on the color code, you can do that. Bedside, every patient has a unique number. So once your system is linked with the hospital interface system, so basically you can link it with the patient through these barcodes and which are already there, which depicts the patient's UHID number. So once the RFID and barcode bed scanner is used, the, it is turned on, a unique password is there. So basically you can uh, you can allot a single PDA device or a, or a barcode reader for each unit or each word and it all can have a different password. So once you have a unique password, obviously uh, others can't use it to initiate the, initiate the transfusion. Then you begin a transfusion start is the process that you do here. You can see the start button, just press the start button. It's like a mobile device and you can just press the start. So once that happens, it will say scan the patients. The scan is through the reader that is already present and the reader requires the barcode of the patient which is available in the wristband or IP file at the bedside. The product is then scanned for identification. And if both the things are matching, then it, the reader will indicate it's a match, prompting to proceed for the transfusion. So to end the transfusion, similarly, there is a stop key that is provided and the device asks for reconfirmation before it does end the transfusion. So this causes a real-time tracking of transfusion, starting, ongoing, and ending. So you can have a start date when it started, where it started, which word it is, and ended at what time. So basically, you know that every transition should be ended within four hours of uh, starting. So you can even monitor that aspect as a quality parameter in your hospital. So this is a study that has been done in a hospital, and they found out that the impact of this RFID when you just on the blood bank inventory, if you see, because you have to make the stocks every time, there is a uh, there is a process of making stocks manually. So once you do that, the number of manas that were earlier used in a year were 1100, and actually it has gone down to uh, 19 hours per year. So huge, huge uh, impact on implementation, especially on the inventory management. Similarly, other benefits are there, and uh, there are some tangible benefits like bulk reading. You can have data storage. You can uh, uh, the digital data can be accurately reproduced and checked. Identification, uh, because clerical errors are the ones that happen. So correct blood component will be transfused to the correct patient. Patient blood safety is maintained. Location can be real-time tracking of the blood components, whether it's in the ward or at some remote location, even from away from the hospital, can be monitored through this wireless interface. And also process management and real-time alerts. So you can know whether there is a delay in transfusion. Suppose there is a transfusion action that has happened. When was the transfusion started? When the transfusion ended? Or if there was any problem that had occurred that can be uh, there. And also now the, the, there is a provision of having a transfusion card at the bedside. So if everything goes well, you can even enter the parameters like the, the vitals, the blood pressure, the te temperature, the pulse, and all of that can be monitored. And you can, by a click, generate a transfusion card at the bedside, which can be stored in the patient's file. So all of this has got numerous benefits. And as a transfusion medicine specialist, I feel this is a boon to the transfusion medicine and should actually improve the blood transfusion supply uh, at a very, very great length. So I hope RFID, which is a digitization of the process, should pave way and have more popularity in the Indian scenarios. And I fully advocate the same. Thank you so much. Hope this was beneficial to all of you. If there is any questions or anything you want to ask about this, uh, you can always write in the chat box. Thank you so much.